I'll now take the sedent for this meeting of the Clyde Valley Learning Development Joint Committee held on the 27th of February 2023. Following members are present, councillors Andrew Anderson, Anne McTaggart and Jessica Brennan. And councillor Campbell, are you present yet? Yeah, I'm there. Thank you and welcome. And councillors Emma Rodden and councillor Kerr are also present. So I will now pass you back to the conveners, the convener for today's business. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so declaration of interest. Are there any interests to declare? Nope. Um, on to item two, changes in membership of the joint committee. This is on pages five to six of your papers. And can I ask Stuart to take us through this? Thanks, Convener. The report advises that Councillor Kerr has replaced Councillor Hamilton as a joint committee representative for South Lanarkshire Council while Councillor Hamilton remains on leave. As noted in the report, in terms of the minute of agreement of the Clyde Valley Learning and Development Project, the convener of the joint committee shall be the elected representative appointed by South Lanarkshire Council as lead authority and therefore Councillor Kerr will carry out the role of convener during Councillor Hamilton's period of leave. The report also advises, as per the decision of North Lanarkshire Council at its meeting held on the 15th of December 2022, that Councillor Campbell has replaced Councillor Bollinger as the representative for North Lanarkshire Council. I would ask that members please note the contents of the report. Thank you. Can I move that report um, to be noted and ask for a seconder, please? Uh, can I ask members to agree? Thank you. Can I ask members to agree and note the report? Okay, Doc. And on to item three, minutes of the previous meeting on pages seven to eight. And can I ask Councillor Brennan if she's happy to move the minutes as a correct record? Yes, I'm happy to move these minutes. Thanks, Councillor Kerr. And can I ask for a seconder? Thank you. Uh, item four, revenue budget monitoring 22 to 23 uh, on pages 9 to 12. And uh, can I ask Jackie Taylor, she's going to talk us through that. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Uh, this is our revenue budget monitoring report for this year. It's the first report that we've brought to the committee and it takes us up to the 29th of December 2022. Now, in the background section, you can see there that the running costs for the Clyde Valley Learning and Development Joint Committee are funded from contributions from member councils. And at the February meeting of the committee, 15 councils confirmed their membership position. So that took our total membership contributions to £78,000. In addition, we've estimated training expenditure this year of £25,000, which is recharged to councils. So that's been added to the budget, giving us a total expenditure and income budget of £103,000. The appendix uh, shows the financial position for the Joint Committee and it's showing a break-even position at the moment. And we're asking that that position is noted. Thanks, Convener. Can I move that the report be noted and can I ask for a seconder? Thank you. Uh, on to, oh sorry, can I ask members if they agree to note the report? Agreed. Item five. So that's an update on membership and funding for the Clyde Valley Learning and Development Project for 23-24 on pages 13 to 18. And can I ask uh, Jill, please? Okay, thanks very much, convener. So, this report is about the membership of the project for the new financial year. It uses a membership model which was agreed by members of this committee in 2018, and that was to introduce a model of school and associate members. That recognised the different needs of councils at that time and helped to make participation in the work of the project more flexible for them. As a minimum baseline, uh, we anticipate income of 61,000 and five full members for a uh, continuation of the project uh, and that's agreed in our standing orders. Uh, the tariffs and the membership categories are unchanged uh, from 2018. 
And I can report that as of today, there are still two responses from councils that we're awaiting. However, I'm pleased to report that there are enough responses to confirm five full and eight participating members, which more than meets the minimum requirements. Uh, and the responses of the two outstanding councils are expected um, imminently and essentially are a bonus if they continue. The money that we recoup is spent on staff support and the audit costs in the main, with any excess used to support the learning and development needs which are common to the councils involved. Going forward, elected members on this committee represent the five full members and the project steering group uh, reflects that membership as well. It means that the work of the group in terms of the other activities which are described in some of the other reports to this committee today can continue to develop and to be supported. And namely, these are e-learning, promoting positive behaviours, social care and CMI or Chartered Management Institute work. So I would ask that, that members um, uh, note the recommendations, approve the recommendations that the model uh, of membership and funding remains viable, that the categories and level of membership fees are retained and the minimum level of funding is as outlined as £61,000, including the audit fee, and that we have five full member councils who have confirmed their uh, participation in the project uh, and we do have eight other participating ones too, and that the current confirmed level of funding exceeds the recommended minimum level and that the two outstanding councils uh, are Renfrewshire and Dundee City, um, who we hope to hear from in uh, the next few days. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jill. Um, can I ask, is there anybody get any questions or comments for Jill? I see um, Andrew Anderson. That's me. Thanks, Jill. Uh, but just a query about um, terminology here, just to understand it and make sure I know what it actually means. But um, employee implica implications, where it talks about the in-kind contributions of officers uh, drawn from the Clyde Valley Member Councils is, it remains crucial. Um, can you explain just a bit more about that, just to sort of understand it uh, properly? So currently the funding allows for a project manager. However, there is probably a lot more work that is done by people who are not directly funded by the project. Um, and that includes the coordination of um, learning and development needs within each of the member councils, attending meetings, um, agreeing to a common way for, forward. And that's in kind uh, time and contribution that allows the project to um, carry on, as well as the work that Jerry does in coordinating all of this activity and managing it. There's a lot of goodwill involved in making the project work, and that's the in-kind support that's referred to there. Uh, understood. Uh, that's that's what I was thinking. Yeah, um, people's um, people's time and effort to keep it going. Uh, and sorry, can I just finally finally just ask about the last two? Uh, are the indications potentially positive or just hopefully waiting that there'll be a yes from, is it Dundee and Renfrewshire? Uh, so I haven't heard from Dundee so recently. Renfrewshire were hoping to conclude their budget uh, discussions internally at the end of last week, so I'm expecting to hear from them imminently. Okay, thank you. No further questions? OK, can I move the report be approved and can I ask for a seconder? OK, uh, members happy to uh, to approve the report? Yeah, thank you. Uh, on to agenda item six and it's meeting arrangements for 23, 24 and 26 and 27. And it's over to Stuart for that. Thanks, convener. It's previously been practised to submit a report annually to the Joint Committee. However, on this occasion, I have provisionally programmed meetings for the remainder of the current Council term, as detailed in the report. You'll also note that it's proposed that the meetings continued to be held via Microsoft Teams. I would refer members to the recommendation at paragraph 2.1 of the report. Thank you.
Yeah, thanks very much, Stuart. Um, can I move the report be approved and ask for a seconder? Thank you. And maybe members happy to approve the report? Thank you. On to item seven. Uh, it's an update on the 2022-23 audit of Clyde Valley Learning and Development Joint Committee, pages 21 to 24. And can I ask uh, Pauline Murray to take us through this? Thank you. Thanks, convener. So firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'm Pauline Murray. I'm a senior audit manager at Audit Scotland, and I've been appointed as the engagement lead for this audit for the next five years. Um, and I look forward to working with the committee over, over the years. So if I just take you to page 21, as you can see, I've written to the committee to provide an update. So our planning work is at an early stage, but following conclusion of our audit planning procedures, we'll issue you a copy of our annual audit plan, and this will be by the 31st of March. Our preliminary planning work has identified one significant risk, and this is a risk across all audits per the ISAs. So that's the risk of material misstatement due to management override of controls. I've also included details of our audit fee, which is increased by £250. And this has been seen across all our audits, which is a reflection of the current audit market and the costs of delivering high quality audit. Then in terms of our audit timetable, we're working towards a sign off of September, all going to plan. Um, thank you. If I can hand back to you, convener. Thanks very much, Pauline. Um, first of all, can I ask any members if you have any questions or comments uh, for Pauline? No, I'm not seeing any hands up. Uh, so could I just um, can I just move that the update be noted and can I ask for a seconder? Thank you. Can I ask members if they're happy to note the update? Agreed. Thank you. And on to item eight, Clyde Valley Learning Development Project, contract renewal for provision of an e-learning platform, pages 25 to 30 in your papers. And uh, I believe, um, Jerry, you're going to take us through that. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Um, this paper relates to a, a central part of the collaboration activity that the, the project has engaged with since the early years. Um, the use of e-learning has always been an identified means of making efficient delivery of training, development, using resources as well, and also a, a way of, of uh, offering economies of scale to the groups, to the councils, councils from involved in the group um, through a joint, a collaborative approach. Um, this was particularly highlighted during the pandemic, when where the online delivery was particularly uh, significant and became fundamental to maintaining our services. Um, during the period that the report makes reference to the fact the background of this is that the company that provides our platform for the, for the majority of the councils um, was always uh, it was a company called Brightwave, which has recently, in, in the last two years, been taken over by Capital Learning. Um, in order to maintain the continuity, the background on page 25 and 26 explained that the uh, we extended the existing contract through a non-contractual extension in, in 2021. And this, uh, this allowed for two years cover to, uh, to maintain the exceptional circumstances during the pandemic. At that point, there was a, f a full consultation with the councils as to what kind of functionality they wanted to have within this product. And they were looking for something a bit more modern and a bit more capable of offering different functions. So the, the providing company offered uh, two options for us to consider when we extended the contract using the non-contractual extension. One was to continue with the existing product and one was to move to a new, more sophisticated version. Now, in doing that, the councils uh, had to take on additional costs of the implementation and migration. And that only allowed them then in two years to exploit the benefits of the, the new platform. 
So whilst it's been fairly successful during that period, the, a number of requests came back from the councils to, to myself to investigate, could they extend further their time with this new product to maximise the investment they put into the implementation and migration side of things? Was two years is actually a relatively short time. And given the time it took to carry out the migration, most of the councils didn't even have the full two years to experience the, the new platform. So we were asked to, to find whether there was any way we could look into extending this. The rules and regulations, as advised by our procurement and legal colleagues, said that we could not extend the existing contract. It would need to be a new contract that was awarded. And so we were asked to see if there was such a way we could do this within the rules and regulations of the standing orders on procurement and contracts. The advice we got is that there is such a route possible uh, based on the South Lanarkshire Council standing orders for uh, procurement. And this is based on the fact that we, as lead authority within South Lanarkshire, it's the standing orders of South Lanarkshire which apply across uh, the Clyde Valley Group. And we act for and on behalf of, of the group in general terms. So. The request then was put forward that we have we've, uh, adopted that request. We have taken the, the stage to the back to the provider and asked them to, using the negotiated solution, what kind of terms they would offer to extend for a further two years. The offer has come back to us that they would uh, retain their pricing model from two years ago um, if we were to extend for a period of two years and there would be no further upfront costs because we'd already uh, invested in the implementation and the migration side already. So this was regarded by, by the group as uh, acceptable terms and we were given the instruction to move forward to try and to, to push through the internal process of standing order nine. Um, so that is the, the situation for the councils involved. Uh, we believe it's acting in the best interests of the rest of the councils. The complication that has arisen in this situation, though, is for the committee to know, is the very unusual factor that as the lead authority, South Lanarkshire Council will not be taking up the offer of the extension. And this is based on an internal decision that the council has embarked on a, of a wide ranging project to invest in a, in a system for both financial and HR management which takes, uh, which also includes a learning management platform. So on the basis of that decision, South Lanarkshire um, would not, it would not be in the best interest of South Lanarkshire to continue with this platform despite its benefits. Um, the upshot of that is that South Lanarkshire is acting on behalf of the group but won't be participating in the contract. And I just think it's important for the committee to know that we will still act on the best interests of the rest of the wider Clyde Valley group. And I, as project manager, will take that responsibility to manage the contract, although South Lanarkshire will be taking a different path. So the that's the situation with the contract. We anticipate that it will run consecutively when uh, we follow through the process and it will allow no gaps in the, in the provision at the end of this contract on the 31st of July 2023 and we'd anticipate that there would be a continuous service for all the councils involved beyond that period. So I'm happy to take any questions and I would ask the committee to note the contents of this report. Thank you, Jerry. Any questions? Not seeing any hands. Okay, so um, can I ask members if you're happy to note the report? Yes, thank you. Moving on to item nine, uh, outcome of the strategic review of the Promoting Positive Behaviour Programme, pages 31 to 40 on your papers. And uh, back to you, Jerry, to take us through this. Thank you. Thank you, Convener. Um, uh, apologies to the committee, this is quite a lengthy report um, and I guess it reflects the fact that this is, uh, there's been quite a great, a great deal of activity involved in carrying out the review of, of this programme. Um, for background purposes, the committee will be aware that social care element of the project represents um, a, very, a very significant part of the project's work across the board and has done since the outset. Um, within the social care work plan, the Promoting Positive Behaviour programme is one of the Clyde Valley's 
more, most successful um, d uh, deli uh, delivery elements and has also been, um, it's a flagship programme which we're extremely proud of. Um, it's been used in the, for almost 10 years now by eight of the councils, the original eight member councils who co-own the Promoting Positive Behaviour programme. It's been very successful in terms of, uh, it's been well received by stakeholders across the board and has evaluated extremely well through the process of evaluation carried out in 2019. Um, the recognition though that the group had was that for a programme that was evolved, evolved rather in, in 10 years ago needs to take cognizance of changes to the landscape within the policy world of social care and the recognition that a number of new initiatives had come into play during that period and, and other different approaches were being taken to the, to the, the delivery of, of social care and particularly in managing challenging behaviour, that we needed to be certain that this, pro this programme was still fit for purpose. To give you an example, in some councils there's been a move over the period that the programme's been there to take to move away from any kind of physical intervention. So we need to be ensure that, that service users uh, were given the best service and that practitioners were not confused about the message that was being given out through the training and the programme and that the actual delivery in, in the service situation. So that was the purpose behind the review and the background to the review, which is outlined in section uh, paragraphs three and 13, uh, pages 31 and 32. Um, the, the, the review methodology as set out in, in, in paragraph five was to kind of bring as many of the stakeholders from the, the eight councils together and um, set the terms of the review. So this was done through bringing together everyone into a group situation and doing some workshops to focus on certain themes. The decision, the, the recommendations then are outlined in section 5.2, where four separate headings were considered um, to be the focus of the review. That was subsequently um, so, um, reduced down to three as we merged the first two, the, the materials uh, being used in the training and the methods of delivery. So we have three sections for the review. Um, the outcomes of the review Jerry, your microphone's muted. Just the last five seconds or so. Sorry, I don't know. It's always always happens to me at this point. <laughs> uh, I, I hope um, I hope uh, you were able to pick up as far as the the separate sections of the review. So we had three three separate areas that were covered. So on in section six on page thirty three of the report. Um, we, we look at the training materials and the methods of delivery. Now, there's a large number of, recommend, of specific recommendations that are, that are itemised in Appendix 1 of the report, and I won't go through that. A lot of these are quite specific to the actual terminology and the approach to the materials that are being delivered. But the recommendation of this report is that this needs to be updated and take on board the, the, the processes and the um, policies behind trauma-informed practice, which is now a, a strategic um, programme affecting all councils and all staff within councils. So to make sure that we have taken that language on board, we're reviewing the full documentation within the delivery of the programme. Similarly, um, as it was highlighted during COVID uh, lockdown responsibilities, um, we had to look at whether we could deliver some of the programme online. Um, and there are challenges associated with that, particularly because of the fact that there are physical interventions to be demonstrated and taught and practised. Um, but we're looking at ways that we can continue with a hybrid model so that in the event of such a situation arising again, we wouldn't be compromised in delivering the programme still further. So those are the, the kind of pr principal areas. Um, we've we've still got work to do in terms of dealing with the trauma-informed agenda, but m many of the suggestions have been put in place. Um, and we are, we're speaking with external um, experts in that area, principally the, uh, the lead in Greater Glasgow and Clyde Psychology Services who are, are leading on the um, trauma-informed uh, practice within the, the group. So we're, we're working directly with 
those people as experts now. With regard to section 6.2, this, this looks at the second area, the service users use. We've, this has always been a challenging area, as you as you'll understand, from the, the the nature of who the service users are. Sometimes they are elderly people. Sometimes they're people with learning disabilities. Sometimes there are young people and children who, therefore, uh, it's not always easy to get their feedback in the situation. And for this reason, it was recognised that whilst it was super important to continue with this, it shouldn't be something that's done in a snapshot in time. It should be something that becomes a dynamic review over the period. So the group's recommendation as set out in, set in paragraph 6.2.3 uh, is that this should be an ongoing process continued over the next two year period at least, and that it should be a cycle of feedback that then continues to inform the programme and we take on board through a number of different means any kind of contact situation with our, our service users to take the feedback and ensure that the programme is continuing to benefit them uh, and, and in their in their service delivery setting. So um, the, the, although that means that we will continue with the review, I think that it's been agreed across the board that that's a much more effective way of continuously improving the programme rather than taking a random snapshot in time in any given moment. The third uh, aspect of the review is to look at the sustainability of the programme. And I think the importance of this is, is, is very clear that we have a very successful programme here. It's well respected, it's well used. In fact, there has been interest from other authorities uh, out with the, the core group within the Clyde Valley. As recently as this week, Orkney Council um, have been involved in discussions with us about taking up the programme in the Orkney uh, Council and that would be the first of the councils out with the core group to take on the programme and so we're in discussions with them about setting up their local governance, we will train their people and it's very likely that this will trigger further interest across the country for, for other councils to do this which would be very um, uh, rewarding for us and satisfying for them, I think, in terms of both financial and good practice uh, delivery of, of, of this uh, service, this very difficult, challenging service. So that, that's part of the, the question of sustainability, about having governance in place across the board. Um, it was recognised that um, we have lost key staff over the period of time. So many of the people who were directly involved in, this, in the principles behind PPB and setting up the programme have moved on either to different positions or have retired. And it's, it's, it's highlighted the fact that the background, understanding the background to the programme and the responsibilities involved in maintaining it is actually very challenging. So it's for this reason we're trying to look at the principles of future proofing the programme who the key stakeholders need to be to keep that moving, to make sure that all the governance levels are in place in each of the councils, that the shared ownership, whilst it's a strength, is maintained as an equal partnership, and that senior managers continue to understand the sustainability requirements um, and resource it accordingly. So we've got recommendations there. They'll go to the strategic governance group and through that support channel, we'd hope that we could set in place um, the ground rules for retaining the programme over time, even when we have changes in personnel. So it is a long report. It's a complicated review process, but I would like to ask the committee to, to accept, note the contents of the review and the progress that's been made and be happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding to this paper. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Any questions or comments? No, I'm not seeing any hands up. Okay, can I just ask, are members happy to note the report? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Uh, on to um, item 10, urgent business. There are no items of urgent business that have been intimated. So I'd just like to bring the meeting to a close and ask the clerk to stop the recording of the meeting.